In this video, I'll be doing a detailed solution to the maths question you see on the screen here. It's from the Cambridge A-Level exams from 2024, paper 2.2 or paper 2.3. They're actually the same paper. If you're looking for a different question from one of those papers, check out my description below. It should have a link to a playlist there. I'll be doing all this on a whiteboard, hopefully just like you're used to your teacher doing. But remember, we are on YouTube, so take advantage, pause, rewind, or even watch at a different speed. If you do like this video or any of my videos, I would greatly appreciate a subscribe, a like, a share, or even a super thanks. Question seven starts off with a trig trigonometric identity that they want us to, to prove. It's not actually that difficult of a one. Uh, it just has a couple of tricks in it. Uh, the first trick comes to me quite naturally because I never use secant and cosecant. So whenever I see them, the first thing I do is I change them into sine and cosine. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that first. Uh, two, and then we'll solve the question from there. Two sine theta. Um, so secant, uh, this is how I remember, is one over cosine. So this is the other one. Uh, one over sine two theta. So instead of proving that, let's go ahead and prove this one. Uh, what I often say is take the more complicated side and make it look like the simpler side. So let's take the left side and try and make it look like the right. Um, one thing jumps out at me here is sine 2 theta. We have a formula for that. Look in your formula tables. And well, let's write the top row again first, uh, 2 sine theta. So this bottom row, this uh, sine 2 theta, can we turn into 2, let me just check my notes, uh, 2 sine theta cosine theta. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it then. The 2's cancel, the sine's cancel, and we're just left with what we were looking for, 1 over cosine uh, theta, and that, that's it. You're, you're only getting two marks for that, so that's why it wasn't all that long. In part B, they give us this fairly nasty looking equation, um, but hopefully we notice that, uh, that this, a lot of this is similar to what they gave us up here. Now, you can solve this using uh, secants in your answer, but like I already said, I, I don't like using them, so I never do. So I'm gonna end up turning everything into cosines and sines. Um, so to do that, uh, first thing I'll point out that what I have here is nearly what I have here, except for this two. So let's go ahead and move this two over and turn into a half over here and do the same on this row. And I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use this identity here. Um, I'm gonna use the fact that sine theta co cosec two theta is equal to one over cosine theta. So I'm just gonna replace that. So this becomes uh, tangent squared theta plus seven multiplied by one over two, uh, one over cosine theta uh, equals eight. I'm gonna solve from here instead. Um, so, and that, that was the main trick they wanted. They wanted to use this identity to make the question easier. And uh, next thing I would do is replace tan. Tan can be turned into sine and cosine uh, quite easily. That's just sine theta over cosine theta uh, squared. And this becomes seven over two, uh, one over cosine uh, theta um, equals eight. Uh, next thing, well, let's move this squared in to both of them. And uh, next thing I do is get rid of these bottom rows. Uh, they have very similar bottom rows. There's two cosines here, uh, cosine squared. There's one of them here. If we multiply every one by cosine squared, it should all disappear. And uh, this multiplied by cosine squared just leaves sine squared. This multiplied by cosine squared, uh, cosine squared on top divided by cosine. It just leaves, well, it leaves the seven over two, first of all and it'll leave one cosine on top. And then eight will get multiplied by cosine squared as well. Eight cosine uh, squared theta. And next thing, um, whenever you have squares, uh, sine squared or cosine squared, you hopefully are thinking, let's put it in a box here, uh, c squared plus s squared is equal one. Cosine squared plus sine squared is equal one. That means we can, if we ever want to change one of these, like we have cosine, cosine, sine. I wish this was a cosine. It's very easy to do. Uh, sine squared is just equal one minus cosine squared. So let's uh, replace that. That's um, one minus cosine squared plus seven over two cosine theta uh, is equal eight cosine squared theta. 
that, that's just a quadratic that wants cleaning up. Uh, let's move everyone over to the right uh, to make the, the squared part positive. So we'll get um, 8 plus 1, we'll get 9 uh, cosine squared theta. We'll get minus 7 over 2 cosine theta. And uh, let's see, we'll get minus 1. All equals 0. Before we try and solve this, I'd, I'd just get rid of all the fractions, make it a bit easier. Multiply everyone by 2. That's 18 cosine squared minus 7 cosine uh, minus 2 equals 0. Uh, try try factorising it. Um, it's tantalising because there's lots of factors to 18. Uh, I don't see one, so I'm, we're gonna, well, I'm going to use the minus b formula to solve this. So I'm going to use the fact that a is equal 18, b is equal minus 7, c is equal minus 2. And then we're going to solve this, not in x. It's not x squared, it's cosine squared. So I'm going to use the fact that cosine theta is equal to, uh, let's see, minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Uh, let me clean off the left side of the board and we'll do that formula out and uh, see what answers we get. Okay, we get um, cosine theta is equal, uh, minus b is, gives us a plus 7, plus or minus the square root of minus uh, 7 squared is 49, minus uh, 4 times a, which is a is 18, uh, times c, which c is minus 2, all divided by 2 times 36. Uh, you clean this up, uh, but mostly we're just putting it all in a calculator. And if you do that, we'll end up getting cosine theta. We'll get two answers. Uh, one of them, yeah, let's see, we'll get 0 0.580345. I just, I'm taking loads of decimal places because uh, we want our next answer to be correct to three. Uh, personally, what I do is I, I use this in my calculator now and then come back later to get the second answer minus um, 0 0.191457. I'm always paranoid, I don't have enough uh, decimal places. So I just use, your calculator saves I think 90 of them in the back end. Uh, so I just use this straight from the calculator here and try and solve it. So I use this answer in my calculator and I get the inverse cosine of both sides. And the calculator will tell me that this one gives an answer of 0 0.952. Uh, it works out quite neatly in this question, but we do want to be careful. Uh, what did they tell us? They told us the answer was between minus pi and pi, uh, and we're dealing with cosine here. So let's draw a cosine. Um, looks like this, go on both sides. So pi is here and minus pi is here. So uh, for this first one, if the answer is a half, we get two answers. We get this answer and this one here. And they're symmetrical, so the answer is just this plus or minus. There are your two answers. And again, you put this one, uh, I would make sure your calculator has the exact number though. Put this into your calculator and you'll get theta is equal, um, where have I got it here, 1.76. And again, for minus a number, let's see, I'll give, this would be one answer and this would be the other. Also symmetrical, so just plus or minus that guy here. Just be careful though, it doesn't always work out that nice. Um, if it had been sine, uh, you would have ended up having to add pi, or uh, um, for tangent, I guess, would it be add pi as well? I, I always like to draw the picture to figure out what I'm doing. The last part of question seven uh, gives us this um, both easy and difficult uh, integral. I say it's easy and it's difficult because uh, it will work out quite short um, as a question, but there's a few tricks that I do expect most students to um, maybe stumble on. Um, first thing I hope you notice is this is very similar to this. Uh, again, let's do what we did earlier and move this to over this side. And this is the identity we we're given at the start of the question. Um, what we have here is sine, forget the square root for a moment, we have sine an angle and cosec two times that angle. This is an angle and this is twice as big as that, just like we have here. So that's the first trick a lot of students might not notice and it's really important to notice. Um, this tells us an identity when you have an angle and two times it. 
This is sine an angle and cosec two times it. So we're dealing with the same thing. The squares then, um, let's, forget the, let's forget the integral for a moment and we'll just play around with this equation. Um, the squares are important to take care of then. How about I rewrite this as square root of e, sine one over a half x, cosec x, and just put a square over everything. These are the same, um, because these are all multiplied. So the square works on each of them individually. It's quite easy to do. So this is the exact same thing. And what I want to point out is this obeys this identity. So I can then change this. Uh, square root of 8, instead of, instead of this in here, I can write a half secant whatever angle was here. And this angle is x over 2. So that's the, the next confusing bit. Um, this just tells us an angle and twice it gives the, the original angle. An angle and twice it gives the original angle in secant. Hopefully that's uh, clear. Um, all of it is uh, squared, so put the square back in. And in fact, we, we can square this all back in. That'll get an eight. Uh, one over two squared, we'll get over four. Secant uh, squared x over two. That's what this turns into. So uh, let's put the integral back in. dx equals integral of two secant uh, squared x over 2 uh, dx. Um, I say this is easy because this is a known integral. They give it to us in our formulas. Uh, well, let's take the 2 outside first. Um, integrating secant squared is just tangent. So the answer here is just 2 tangent whatever angle was here. Except this angle was a little bit complex, isn't it? It's not just x. It's x over 2. So we're going to have to fix this uh, little substitution I just did by dividing by the integral of, sorry, dividing by the derivative of this. The derivative of x over two is just a half. So we'll end up dividing by a half. And every time we integrate, when there's no uh, limits, uh, we need a constant. So that's pretty much the ang answer. We just, uh, two divided by half just becomes four. So it's four tangent x over two plus c, plus a co some constant c, we don't know. And uh, that's it. That's it for question seven. If you have any questions about that, any follow up questions, anything I did wrong, anything like that, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.